Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. I'm here at the central office, ready to do our next Facebook Live session update for our community to keep our community, of course, engaged and informed. I'm joined by Samuel Titus, who is also going to ensure that everyone has an opportunity to hear and understand what we're discussing on today. I hope you're having a great summer. I know it's been a, 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 a very uh, different type of summer. I'll just use the word different, a different type of summer. And we've had uh, virtual summer school. We've had virtual uh, events in progress all summer and we'll continue to do things virtually throughout the summer. But we're getting ready for the first day of school, which is August 3rd. Again, August 3rd. So what I'd like you to do is if you will, let your friends and your family members know that we're participating in this Facebook Live, this YouTube Live session right now. We'd like to, of course, our community has been wonderful staying engaged and informed. And this is just another effort to keep everyone informed. And so take a second right now to let someone know that you're participating in this YouTube Live session. Encourage them as well to participate. I'll give you about a minute and then we'll begin the presentation. I want you to also be ready to do thumbs up when I ask for you to do thumbs up. That's my way of, of, of ascertaining whether or not everybody's following me. Your understanding, I'll know if I need to slow down, speed up or clarify or say some things rather differently to ensure that everyone understands where uh, the direction we're headed in and the information that we're sharing. So again, I'll pause here to give you a second to encourage others to participate. Okay, well, let's get started. First thing I'd like to do is just remind everybody that while we're in a pandemic, our work of redesigning our school system is not new. We were already discussing redesigning. This pandemic has basically encouraged us to continue in that work and even accelerated some things. But we want you to know that we're redesigning. We are focusing on expanding early learning access. We're creating an abundant supply of highly qualified teachers. And of course, we want to treat our teachers as professionals. We want all of you to know that as we begin the year and as you go throughout the year, you will hear and you will see various uh, strategies and initiatives relative to these three areas as we redesign our school system. Just in case you did not know, we've studied high performing school systems around the world and there are consistent building blocks that they focus on in order to produce high performance. We have decided to focus on three of those building blocks, as I've just mentioned, that we believe will give us the leverage that we need in order to accelerate our work to to be a high performing school system. Again, early learning, treating our teachers as professionals and ensuring that we have, a, have an abundant supply of highly qualified teachers. So let's talk about learning loss in the year uh, 2020, 2021. We've got to work to improve, address learning loss. As you well know, Many of our students, all of our students lost valuable instructional time last semester. Many of our students uh, were already dealing with uh, deficits in reading and in math. So we're working diligently to ensure that we do what we can to accelerate learning here in Clayton County Public Schools. I want you to know just a few things, and this is in your PowerPoint that we posted for you. You may not can see what I have here, but it's in your PowerPoint, and I want you to follow along with me if you will. We're prioritizing, of course, content. We realize that there is not enough time in the day or enough school days in the year to teach everything that must be taught. Therefore, we're prioritizing the content that teachers are teaching, and we're going to focus in on those standards. Our teachers are working to ensure that they use appropriate strategies to prepare students to learn the content if it means that they have to address some prerequisite skills or prerequisite standards, we will be doing just that. But I want all of you to know that we have a host of strategies that we will we'll be implementing to address learning loss. Our goal is this, is to help our kids learn and to recover, to accelerate, to go forward. We do not want 
the loss of content, the loss of learning to negatively impact the future opportunities of our students. And so a word that comes to mind is work. We've got a lot of work to do as, uh, as educators, as students, as parents, all of us working together. We've got quite a bit of work to do, but we will get the work done. So let's talk about reopening. Uh, the last time you and I spoke, we shared a few options about reopening, and I'll just go through those options again very quickly, and I want you to get ready to give me thumbs up. The first option that we shared was reopening using a face-to-face -face option. That was predicated upon a low-risk data situation, a low-risk virus transmission situation. In a low-risk virus transmission situation, all students would return face-to-face. -face. That means everybody would return to school on August 3rd face-to-face -face if we were in a low-risk virus transmission situation. Thumbs up if you understand face-to-face -face is connected to low-risk situation, low-risk of virus transmission, low-risk. Very good, very good. That's the first option. We call it option A. Option B is a virtual learning option. That's basically everyone starting school virtually, everyone starting school virtually on August 3rd if the virus transmission is high risk, high risk. So again, if high risk, everyone will start virtually from home, teachers, students will engage in the instructional process from home. So that's a high risk, low risk, face-to-face, -face. high risk, virtual, everyone would return, uh, start school virtually. So thumbs up if you understand low risk, if you understand high risk, virtually, very good, very good. Thumbs up, very good, very good, very good. Now, if we're not low risk, if we're not high risk, we're in the middle, that's moderate or medium risk. That's the blended option, option C, that we have discussed as well. Basically, on that option, students would come back to school, they would have so many days face-to-face -face and so many days virtually. So many days face-to-face, -face, so many days virtually. All students would be assigned an A or B day. Students who are assigned an A day would return to school on Mondays and Wednesdays. Students who are assigned a B day would return to school on Tuesdays and Thursdays and all students would engage in virtual learning, what we call extending learning beyond the classroom on Fridays. Again, option C is our blended model. It's for moderate, medium risk of virus transmission. It means that all students will get so many days face-to-face -face and so many days virtual. All students will be assigned an A schedule, Monday and Wednesdays, or a B schedule, Tuesdays and Thursdays, and all of them will engage in virtual learning or extending learning beyond the classroom on Fridays. So option A, low risk, face-to-face. -face. Option B, high risk, all virtual. Option C, in the middle, moderate risk, blended, face-to-face -face and virtual. We also offered an option D. In the event we come back face-to-face -face or we have a blended approach, we know we have some concerns out there, and there may be a desire of families for students to attend virtually every day or to participate in instruction virtually every day. That's the option D, the Virtual Learning Academy. That information was sent to all of you on July 5th, and right now, many of you, hundreds, thousands of you have already uh, responded to the Virtual Learning Academy interest form. I encourage you, if you're interested in that academy, that academy basically will require your student to learn from home Monday through Friday for at least the first semester and potentially the second semester. That academy will run concurrently with any of the three options, primarily face-to-face -face and the blended option. So option A, face-to-face, -face, low risk, option B, all virtual, high risk, option C, right in the middle, blended approach, face-to-face -face and virtual learning, and then option D, the Virtual Learning Academy will run concurrently with 
options, primarily option A and B, if we're here face-to-face -face or if we have a blended option. So we have sent the option D, the Virtual Learning Academy interest form to all of you. And hopefully if you've not taken action, if you've not checked your emails, you should do so. And please, please follow the instructions if you're interested in the Virtual Learning Academy. So I'll not go over these survey results. They're in your presentation. I've mentioned them the last time, but for the most part, our parents communicated that they were not comfortable with sending students back to school, even with safety guidelines, as long as the data suggest that the virus is still, transmission is still increasing. And our employees responded similarly. And so we hear, we hear our parents, we hear the employees, we've heard from many constituents, concerns about the potential of increasing the risk of getting the virus because of the increase that's occurring right now throughout the state and throughout this country. What I'd like to do very quickly is share with you again our framework. Many are asking, asking, what are you going to do? Well, August 3rd is still a few weeks away. So we've got about three weeks or so before we get to August 3rd, but we're committed, our board is committed to making a decision, communicating a decision by July 28th. So we are, we are looking at all the resources, we're looking at the data, we're looking at our guidelines and we're looking at our community collaboration, all the in input feedback that we're getting. And right now, right now, as I shared the last time, we will, our data is increasing. The virus transmission data is increasing. And so the last time I spoke to you, we were looking at option C, a blended face-to-face -face and virtual option. However, since that time, because you know us Americans, we like our rights. And so because of that, I don't know how much responsibility we have utilized and the virus continues to increase. So right now, it appears that we're leaning towards a virtual, a full virtual start on the first day of school. Why is that the case? Because the data suggests that right now, we're in an uptick, a surge of the transmission of this virus. As a matter of fact, the virus is worse today than it was when we start, when we stopped school on March 16th. And so while we're reopening and we understand the need to reopen, we understand the need for economic development and economic growth, et cetera. But we also find ourselves in a situation where we've got a virus, we have no vaccine, and it has a very high death rate when compared to the normal flu. Therefore, we've got to make decisions that are in the best interest of our students, our community right here in Clayton County. So to be very clear, our board will be discussing the options that we've shared. But right now, it looks, it appears to be the case that we're leaning towards a virtual opening, which means that everyone will remain at home and we will have instruction virtually. Now, anything is possible between now and August 3rd or July 28th, but as it is, as a situation, as we look at the data, it appears that the virus transmission is increasing and going in the wrong direction for us to bring our students back face to face. So parents, community, students and all, all I can tell you is this, if you say you want children to come back to school, if America wants children to come back to school, and we do, then America has to be responsible and make a decision to sit down, remove ourselves from these environments that the virus is being transmitted and get a handle on this data. <clears throat> I want all of you to know that we're committed. We want our kids again to come back to school, but it has to be a very safe situation. We want students safe, we want staff safe, we want everyone to be safe. 
So again, right now, while again, much can change in three weeks, right now the data suggests that we're moving towards a virtual opening. Why? Because the virus transmission data, the virus cases continue to increase. And we, we must, we must respond to that data appropriately. I want to take a minute to talk about the online registration process. As you well know, uh, we have been communicating our new online registration process. Our new families moving into Clayton are registering their students online. Also, we have current families, current parents, verifying or re-verifying their information. We need to ensure that we have accurate information on all of our students, on all of our parents. So we encourage you to utilize that process. It's been sent to you via email. There are individuals who are uniquely positioned to support you if you have questions or if you need answers, but we want all of you to take full advantage of the online registration process. We're moving away from this face-to-face -face process. It will be online. You say, well, what if you don't have a computer at home? If you Eventually, if you go to the school, they will have a space for you to engage in this process online because we've got to get everyone acclimated to an online process. I want to encourage all of us to get used to, at least for now, dealing with this virtual environment, whether it be virtual instruction or online registration or meeting with your teachers and principals virtually using Google Meeting or Zoom or whatever tool they have at their disposal. I need us all to get comfortable with this virtual experience. Why? Because it is our reality today. Do we hope, do we believe that eventually we'll come out of this pandemic? Of course we will. I don't know how long, neither do you. I don't think the experts know how long. But until we come out of this pandemic, we've got to use the tools that we have to ensure instruction and to ensure that we are in communication with our parents and our community. So again, use the online registration process. Information is sent to, has been sent to you. I'd like to share, you know our board has approved for our district to secure devices for students in grades three through 12. As you well know, we're in the process of ensuring that we get devices. They're not gonna all get here by the first day of school. They may not all get here in the first month of school. So our principals will be working with families and technology to identify those who need devices based upon what we may have so we can give those families devices. Families, if you have devices and you have access, I need you all to support the efforts to ensure that families that don't have access are prioritized. It's important that we all do our part. The day will come when wherein all of you will have a device, but until that day gets here, we need everyone to let's all do our part to ensure that we use whatever tools that we have, whatever devices that we do have, but also that support the schools and the principals as we identify and support families that need those devices. We're also encouraging you families, encouraging all families, if you need access to the internet, let your principals know. We have resources. We're very grateful for our partners, United Way and others, our Clayton County Public Schools Foundation, we have resources that we're using to help families that may not have internet access to have internet access. And so make sure you make that known to your principals. Safety protocols are in place currently here at the central office and at, at, at every school. We're all implementing safety guidelines and protocols. If we come back in a blended option, there will be safety guidelines also implemented. 
As you well know, and you're hearing a lot of districts talk about masks, some are requiring and some are not for students. We're requiring masks of all the employees, but we're not necessarily requiring of all students because we know, we know that we cannot provide masks for all students every day of the year throughout the year. I'm encouraging families to help us in this area to send students to school with masks. We will have masks available at our sites, at schools, for those who may not, for whatever reason, have a mask. But we need the help of our families. And I know our families in Clayton are going to do just that. Send the students to school with masks when you have the opportunity to do so. We're encouraging all of our families to just make it a habit of getting those masks and not just getting those masks, but using those masks. I want to encourage our community to continue to take advantage of the nutrition services. Don't forget we have sites throughout the district. We're serving meals, breakfast and lunch from nine to 12 until July 24th. There's no reason for any anyone to be hungry in our county. Also, we're still partnering with the Atlanta Community Food Bank and on Fridays at select sites, Groceries are still being provided. We encourage you, if you'd like to donate, uh, you can donate to the Clayton County Public Schools Foundation. And I can assure you, I can assure you, we're going to continue right here in Clayton County to ensure that our families have their food resources that they deserve and need to have. I want to remind everyone to complete the census. As you well know, the census will di dictate and determine federal funding, representation. And so I know we're very busy dealing with this pandemic and many families are dealing with issues as a result of this pandemic. But I want to encourage all of us, please take out time to complete the U.S. Census. Stay connected. Stay connected. Our next Facebook Live update will be July 28th at 1 p.m. Check your emails consistently. We'll again be sending out updates. Stay tuned to what's happening on social media relative to our school system. Always know, always know that we're trying to make the best decisions to support our families here in Clayton County. You should know I'm getting quite a few emails of families that are asking if we would consider the uniform uh, issue for next year. And so I have this team right now looking at the uniform issue and we'll probably be taking to our Board of Education a request to waive the uniform policy uh, K through eight for next year, which gives families an opportunity to focus on other areas with those resources. Now, families, I'll say this, no matter what we do as a school system, we will not be able to fix everything that this pandemic has caused. While we are working to mitigate, we're working to provide food, we're trying to make sure you get instruction, we're trying to be mindful of the additional cost with uniforms, we're trying to do our part to support our families here in Clayton County. But at the end of the day, families, your family, my family, all of our families, we've got to make some decisions. We've got to make, we got to have some strategies. We've got to take some actions to ensure that we're safe, to ensure that we have resources, to ensure that we are preparing for our future. We cannot count on no one or anyone beyond ourselves to do that for us. You've got to do that for yourself. You've got to do that for your family. So yes, the school system plays a part and we're going to do our part. But at the end of the day, I want to encourage all of our families, you've got to have a plan. I can't fix the child care situation if we start virtually. No one can. You've got to have a plan. You've got to, neighbors and all others, you've got to come together as a community and we've got to have a plan. I wish I could fix all of that, but I don't think it was meant for me or any of us to fix all of it. So this is what I'll say to all of us as I close. 
there's work to, that has to be done. There's work at every level, at the federal, the state, the local level. We've got work to do. We've got to implement policies to create a more just and equitable society. We've got work to do. We've got to uh, work to change this unemployment rate. We've got to work to change the dynamic of the pandemic and the, this disproportionate uh, impact that it's had, it, it has had on communities of color. We've got to work to ensure that we position ourselves differently. We've got to ensure that we take full advantage of the educational opportunities, whether face-to-face -face or virtually. This is not the time to not take advantage of education. So we've got work to do. Families, you've got work to do. You've got to work, sit down, organize your day, organize your schedule, figure out what we got to do in order to do what we need to do. How are we going to have school? How are we going to get groceries? How are we going to have gas? You've got to do all of those things. That's a part of being free people. That's a part of being humans. Everyone in every nation, all of us are having to figure it out. Yes, our government has responsibilities. Our school system, of course, has a responsibility. But at the end of the day, all of us, we are responsible for ourselves and our families and those who depend upon us. And so I'm, I'm encouraging all of us to figure out your work, figure out what you've got to do, and make sure you have plans. Next, I'll say, I'll just tell you what I've been having to do. I don't know all the answers. You got to have some faith. You got to have faith for the moment, and you got to see beyond the moment. You got to have faith. No sense in being mad and upset and fighting and using violence because you're getting frustrated with life. Listen, life is what life will be at times. You got to calm yourselves down. You got to have peace of mind, and you got to have faith. You got to believe that there's a brighter day coming. That you're going to make it through this situation. You got to believe that I'm going to live beyond this situation. No, we don't like it. We wish it didn't occur, but hey, it is what it is. Let's figure out what we need to do to navigate through it, and let's live through it and on the other end of it. And lastly, similar to faith, you got to have hope. Hope that it's going to be a good school year. I believe we're going to have a great school year. I believe that kids are going to learn, whether they come face-to-face -face or virtually or blended. It doesn't matter. We're going to make the best out of this situation, and we're going to ensure that we mitigate for what we can mitigate for so our students can remain our focus. So I encourage you to have hope. Have hope, Clayton County. Stay positive. Pull yourselves together as a community. Come together as a community. And let's do some things. Let's show Metro Atlanta what it's like to be a community. We shouldn't have violence in our communities and in our homes and in our neighborhoods. Folks shooting and killing each other. Stop all that carrying on. Get something deeper in you. Get some faith in you. Some trust and love in you. There's nothing, there's no situation that's so bad that you got to kill one another over. Because at the end of the day, it's not worth it. It's not worth it. So I encourage all of us, figure out what work we got to do. Internal work, external work. Have faith. Let's make plans to live and have hope, everybody. Stay positive. Know you're being heard. Know we're working, that things are going to happen. Wake up every day with an expectation of good. Put a smile on your face. Put a, 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 a nice word in your mouth and say something kind to somebody else. Let's change the culture in this country by being better people, being a better community being a better school system. So I'll, I'll conclude by saying this. Right now, the first day of school is August 3rd. Of course, the board can always change that if they choose to do so. But right now, the first day of school is August 3rd. And we're going to have school on August 3rd, one way or the other. Our kids will be learning on August 3rd, one way or the other. Our teachers will be teaching on August 3rd, one way or the other. Our students will be learning 
on August 3rd, one way or the other. I appreciate all of you. Know that your superintendent is praying for all of you. I'm praying for every one of my 55,000 students. I love all of you with my heart. I love your families. I appreciate your families. I don't care what you say about me. I still love all of you and I appreciate all of you because we're in this thing together. Stay safe, stay smart, be responsible, and we'll see you the next time. Don't forget our next YouTube live session, July 28th at 1 p.m. Take care.